Good morning, BookTube, YouTube. This is Johnny. It's been a couple of days since I made a video, and I thought, as you all know, my my uh, when I make a video, video, I just sit down and make a video. I don't plan it out. I kind of just do spontaneously. Slice of life, just a uh, a glimpse of my reality here in West Michigan. Here it is June the 5th, 2022. It is 9.19 in the morning. It's a kind of a gray, cold, wet morning here. Uh, I suppose it's kind of late spring. Uh, last week we were out doing yard work. My wife was out pulling weeds and I was pulling weeds out of my flower garden and I have taken some photos of some wildflowers in my flower garden that I post in my Flickr account but not many flowers have come up yet it's been probably we need some more hot weather but what this video is is just an update about what's going on in my my reading life and as you all know, books are primarily my life. I'm a writer. I keep my diary. I've been writing this morning. I'm on page 540 for the year 2022. Writing in my June diary. Today is the 5th. We have 209 days left in this year. Tomorrow is D-Day, and uh, so I'm writing in my diary. Uh, it's like, lately I'm kind of in the mood in the morning. It's kind of hard to get going. <laughs> uh, it's kind of hard to read anything. I don't know, maybe I'm mentally tired. Maybe I'm just, just sit down and contemplate, read the Bible read the Holy Scriptures, but I have been reading in the mornings, same things I've been showing the last couple of weeks. One thing else I wanted to mention is that I'm a mood reader. I don't, I read according to my mood or where I'm at mentally, intellectually, psychologically, spiritually. And sometimes I'm, I don't want anything heavy intellectually, something that's more easy on the brain. Or sometimes I just, I wake up in the morning and I'm just kind of lethargic. And, uh, but these are the things I've been reading. I still been reading uh, Jonathan Edwards, his spiritual writings in the, Classics of Western Spirituality series, Library of the Great Spiritual Masters. I'm almost done with this volume. I'm on the last treatise, which is called A Spiritual Understanding of Divine Things Denied to the Unregenerate, which was written or preached in 1723 in Northampton, Massachusetts. The text was 1 Corinthians 2, verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Yeah, that's in Second, that's in 1 Corinthians 2, 14. It's one of my favorite texts. I think the, the full text is, it says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, 
nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. He's quoting there the Apostle Paul from Isaiah 40, verse 13. So I've been reading Jonathan Edwards. I'm not sure what I'm going to read after Jonathan Edwards in the mornings. I'm supposed to get a, a commentary on 2 Corinthians in this month in the Reformation commentary series. And I might read that or I might read something else. I have been reading uh, Herman Bavick. I got this, I showed this in one of my last recent videos. What is Christianity? Translated by Gregory Parker Jr. I finished the first little essay here, What is Christianity? And the second essay is The Christian Faith by Herman Bavick, written in 1883. So I plan to read that, and I'm still reading The Emotional Life of Our Lord by B.B. Warfield. I really haven't gotten much into this yet, but I keep it on my main study desk. And I keep on my main study desk, desk Herman Bavick, Guidebook for Instruction in the Christian Religion translated and edited by Gregory Parker Jr. I haven't been, I'm still reading this. This is the, I'm reading on this. It's like a, a basic summary of Christian doctrine. And the last one I read was on the Holy Scripture. So these I keep on my desk, even though I'm not really reading them. I've been primarily reading, when in the mood, Jonathan Edwards. Also, I've been reading... Jonathan Edwards, Pastor, Religion and Society in 18th Century Northampton by Patricia Tracy. I'm almost done with this. And I have been reading the medieval spiritual classic. This is the fourth and final volume, The Life of Jesus Christ, Part 2, Volume 2, Chapters 58 to 89 by Rudolf of Saxony, translated by Milton T. Walsh. So this is what I've been reading this morning. Uh, he's on the, the last seven sayings of the Lord Jesus Christ, where he cries out uh, in Matthew 27, 47, which reads, let me see, Matthew 27, 47. So yeah, I've been doing okay. Just going through the days, reading and writing. My wife got back. It's been five days since she's been back from Denver, Colorado, where she visited our daughter Bethany, Andy, her husband, and our grandchildren, Louisa, Margaret, Jack, and little Nora Jean. So it's only been five days, but it seems like she's been here a long time. <laughs> but it says... Uh, It says here, it's, well, it says here in Matthew 27, 47. Some of those who heard there, when they heard him, they said that this is the man who's calling for Elijah. Uh, let me see. Oh, maybe it's in John 19. Let me see. It was not, let me see here. 19, 28. Yeah, here it is. It says here in, Matt, in John chapter 19, starting at verse 25, And now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Cleopas and Mary of Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And he said to the disciples, Behold your mother. The disciple was the, was the Apostle John. And from that 
hour, that disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. And that's what I've been reading here on this morning. Uh, he quotes here, interesting, he quotes from uh, St. Augustine. The fifth word teaches us to thirst for our salvation and to hunger for eternal life. Augustine says, Lord Jesus Christ, you added, I thirst. For what do you thirst? Wine from the grape? Water from the stream? My salvation is your thirst. My redemption is your food. O oh, my soul, thirst as the heart pants after the fountain of water, and yearn for him who thirsteth for you. Are you not wearied, wearied, my soul, by the foul weather, the troubles of the body, the struggle in your heart with vices, the mutability of things, the uncertainty of the times, the expectation and dread of death? Why then do you not desire to be dissolved and to be with Christ? Why does this mortal life detain you? Why are you not excited about the true life with its blessed fountain, its fellowship, and its spiritual joys. Long for that life and reflect how great is the multitude of your sweetness and what glorious things are said of you, O city of God. Where is found the light of life, the fountain of sweetness? Sweet, where is found the light of life, the fountain of all sweetness and the happiness of every human creature? So I've been reading that where Jesus says, After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. And now a, full, now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled it, a sponge with sour wine, put it on Esop, and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. So I was reading that for devotions this morning. I Yesterday I was down the lower level where our, our, the library is, and I picked up Zuma by Antonio de ben, be, Biente. Biento, Biento. I started reading this probably last year, and I finally finished it. And this, he was an Argentina writer. He lived from 1922 and he died in 1986. And I started reading this and I finally finished it. It must have been a year. But I really enjoyed it. And then I had recently bought this one by him, The, the Silent Terry, Silent Terry by Antonio Di Bente. So I started reading this uh, last night. This just came out, 2022, translated out of Spanish or Portuguese. Spanish. Esther Allen, she also translated this one. Esther Allen translated out of Spanish. And I have been reading primarily the last couple of days in my mood. I, uh, Friday, I volunteered at the Book Nook, the library used bookstore. And I read some more of the ideological ideological organs of the American Revolution by Bernard Balin. Really enjoying this. And then I've been reading uh, The Republic of Dreams, Greenwich Village, The American Bohemia, 1910 to 1960 by Ross Wisenstone. Uh he wrote for the Village Voice for many, many years. He lived in Greenwich Village for 40 years, and he worked on this book for many years, researching it, and he died in 1998. I've really been enjoying this. I'm on the chapter of Eugene O'Neill on the Provincetown Players. That's the chapter I'm on now. And then the next chapter is on the Feminists of the Village, and then it goes into the life of uh, Edna St. Vincent Millay 
and then it goes into the life of imminent villagers, Maxwell Boheim, Hart Crane, Williams, Little Magazine, Poetry Wars. I just, I just really enjoying this book. If, if you like reading about literary history, uh, Greenwich Village, New York, I really have been enjoying this. And then I've been reading the, the Problem of Democracy, the President Adams, John Adams, and then his son later on, John Quincy Adams, confront the cult of personality. But Nancy Eisenberg and Andrew Bernstein. So these are things I've been reading when I'm not writing or just drifting through the days the morning, afternoon, late afternoon, evening, and night. So I got books coming in the mail, used books, this week. I was supposed to get them this week. And I got a stack of uh, thrift store books down the lower level. I'll show in a future, future video. So, yeah, that's what's going on. And one thing uh, people sometimes don't realize when I show you all these books from thrift stores, the Book Nook, Blue Stockings Bookstore here in town, I don't read them all. I'm a book collector. I do read all the time. But I like collecting books. I like having a library full of books. And since I have the room <laughs> and I have the financial means, now, like I said, majority of the books I buy are, are used. <laughs> uh, now, I do buy new books, but most of the books I have in my library, I've collected at used book sales. One thing about the restrictions being lifted for COVID there's now there's big huge there's going to be book sales uh, that uh, like I told you that here at the book nook the friends of the library use book sales in Ju in July also there's a giant used book sale in Grand Rapids on the 4th of July that was canceled last year because of COVID but I read last yesterday that they're going to have this giant used book sale on the 4th of July in Grand Rapids. Over 20,000 used books. and uh, So that's where I've been buying my books for the last uh, 30 years. As you all know, know in the, I've said in past videos, I didn't really start reading outside of Christian literature until I left the work world back in June of 2007. Now before 2007, I did read secular books once in a while, like John Irving. I always read Jack Kerouac, Allen Ginsberg, William Burroughs, uh, John Updike, Saul Billows, people like that I always read. But back in those days, I was so busy with college and seminary and raising a family and teaching and preaching and that I didn't have the mental energy or time to read outside of Christian literature. Uh, reform. For many years, I read systematic theology and biblical theology and New Testament theology and commentaries and church history and spirituality and mystical theology and but now the last 17 18 years I've been able to read all over the place now I do read Christian literature up until noontime usually and sometimes I read Christian literature in the afternoons and evenings and when I do read secular literature, I like biographies, history, books on art, reading, I like poetry, I like reading about Bohemia, beatniks, artists, poets, eccentrics, P. 
people who, f philosophers, thinkers, but I like primarily reading about Christian books, books on the Bible, because I got to, one thing about being a Christian, you have to nurture your soul. You have to, you have to read the, you don't have to, but you read the Bible and you like reading a spiritual book. So you can't, I can't have a steady diet of just not reading the Bible or spiritual writings. But I like reading about history. I like learning new things. Like I said in my past videos, I'm a student. I like reading literary history. I like reading about writers and, and poets and thinkers. And I like reading about American history. And I like reading about church history and medieval exegesis and medieval theology and uh, church fathers and Pauline theology and I like reading about uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, so it just goes on and on. So I just thought I'd stop by here on a Sunday, a beginning of a new week. I hope you had a good weekend. You have a good new reading week. I do thank you for all the comments. I'm always finding more comments. Uh, they're always showing up and sometimes I see a comment it's been two weeks or two years so forgive me if I don't if I miss your comment I don't mean to purposely I appreciate all your comments I thank you for all the subscribers and all your encouraging words and do pray that you have a good new week and until next time bye